My name is Kevin Tokoff. In this video, we're going to discuss the theory behind mannitol salt agar, or an MSA test. Okay, so mannitol salt agar, it's going to contain two things. Number one, obviously in the name, it's going to contain mannitol. Mannitol is a, a sugar alcohol. It's similar in some ways to glucose. It's a six carbon sugar, except for the fact that it's an alcohol. Um, it's a little bit different, although it can be converted into things similar to glucose, which we'll see in a minute. The other thing that this contains is it contains a very high salt concentration. In fact, it's going to contain approximately a 7.5% salt concentration. Most bacteria are not able to survive at such a high salt concentration. So, it turns out that due to the high salt concentration, this test is diagnostic typically for species of the Staphylococcus genus. Okay, so typically Staphylococcus will grow on this medium, okay? And then mannitol salt agar is going to be used to determine whether or not it can actually uh, metabolize or ferment mannitol. Let's look at how this occurs. So mannitol can be converted ultimately to fructose. And then fructose can be converted through an enzyme called fructokinase to fructose 6-phosphate. Fructose 6-phosphate is an intermediate in glycolysis, and so glycolysis will continue as normal to produce this molecule down here, which we know as pyruvic acid or pyruvate. Okay, pyruvate can then be fermented, but it's not going to be fermented to lactic acid as we've seen in the past. It's going to undergo a different fermentation pathway towards ethanol, which is typically what we refer to as alcohol fermentation. Pyruvate will be decarboxylated to acetaldehyde and then reduced to ethanol. So... What does MSA test do? Just read this because it's kind of a profound statement. MSA, or mannitol salt agar, selects for organisms that can grow in high salt concentration and ferment mannitol. And examples of bacteria that will be selected for would be members of Staphylococcus. Okay, so here's the biochemical basis of this. Let's look and see what actually will happen. Now, this again is going to contain a phenol red pH indicator, okay? Now, like we said, high salt concentration inhibits some bacterial growth, and if the growth is inhibited, that's automatically going to produce a negative result. And in the case of MSA, a negative result is going to appear red, like this on the left in both the top and bottom figure. Now, colonies that can ferment mannitol will appear yellow, as we can see on the right side of this plate right here on the top and the bottom. That will be a positive MSA result. So in order to be able to grow an MSA, you have to meet two conditions. One, you have to first be able to survive the high salt concentration. And B, you have to be able to ferment mannitol because that fermentation is actually what's producing the yellow color. Okay, so make sure to watch the demonstration on mannitol salt agar. And then, in the next video, we're actually going to discuss the catalase test.